Welcome to the channel. Today, I thought we would talk about how to set up a French easel for painting in your home studio or outdoors. First, let's begin with the easel itself. I'm gonna take this panel down. I use the Maybath full box easel. This will set you back, even if it's on sale, about $200 but it is very well made. Let me show you a couple of things on the easel itself. The wing nuts are very, are very good and they hold, they hold the uh, structure tight. Those are what you really need to look at, especially with the cheaper ones. What really sets the cheaper ones apart besides the kind of wood they're using is the wing nuts. And of course it's got the back leg in the same way here, very solid well constructed it's got a leather handle and then two clips and you can also tell that this is solid solid wood structure and even these are very well made all right let's come back around here so the first thing we want to make sure we do this already has a panel holder. So if you don't want to invest in a separate panel holder, this will do the job. You can store your panels. If you have uh, canvases, a stretch canvas, you can uh, set them here. If you have panels, you can use these little clips on the front of the easel. And of course, they just uh, expand with this mechanism here. You just loosen that up and you can you can adjust that as you need if you've got a stretch canvas or if you're using a panel. Let's put that up a little bit. All right. And uh, the panels that I'm using these days are made by US Art Supply. This is an 11 by 14. I tend to stick with one size for painting outdoors. And so the 11 by 14 is the one that I tend to use. These canvas panels are fairly cheap and they're also archival quality. Of course, maybe that's just a marketing gimmick, but I find that uh, this particular panel is really good, especially for practicing. Another uh, panel company that I would mention, if you really want a, a premium panel, then you may want to try Raymar, and I'll try to put the link below if you uh, need that, but it's just raymar.com. All right, and uh, the French easel comes with a palette which uses, which serves as a cover. It will actually go over top of this drawer when it's shut and become a cover, keeping all these paints and things in their position. So, so how do we, how do we set up the drawers in the French easel so that we maximize the space and can serve on the weight of the unit? Because we all know that the French easel weighs um, in excess of about 13 to 14 pounds, just empty let alone the materials that we place in the French easel. Well, as you can see, I tend to, uh, to use Gamblin. Uh, these are student grade, I also have professional grade. I just have the student grade in here right now because I'm be, gonna be practicing later on today and don't want to uh, waste a really good paint on the, the practice sessions. So uh, as you know, I use a limited palette and so I don't want to take tons and tons of tubes with me. Also, as you well know, the bigger tubes are cheaper per volume than, um, than the small tubes. And so I tend to use the, the large, what we might call studio tubes and uh, just fewer of them when I pack up. So we've got a yellow, a blue, a red, cadmium yellow light, ultramarine blue, a lizard and crimson. Sometimes uh, I use a lizard and crimson permanent when I, when I do the pro line. Then we've got uh, titanium white, of course, and burnt umber. And then two power colors that I use, but uh, not that often, so I buy the small tubes of that, which uh, these are very convenient if you want to reduce the weight. You can get all of these colors in these tubes, but it's going to cost you more per milliliter than if you bought the larger tubes, of course. So this is phthalo blue, and this is cadmium red light. These will help you get to some of the colors that you may not be able to reach with the limited palette of the five colors I just showed you. So you may want to have a little bit of these two colors around so you can bump up your greens and bump up your reds if they happen to be in the landscape. 
As far as brushes, then I keep them uh, divided. Uh, the uh, easel comes with a couple of these metal dividers. And so we've got, got uh, an assortment of brushes. These are all hog bristle brushes, natural hog bristle brushes. And I keep uh, numbers, let's see, this is a Princeton Ashley line. And I keep the numbers uh, eight, six, four, and two. So those are in here. I also keep a, a fan brush. This is a number two in that Ashley uh, Princeton line as well. Then uh, Princeton also makes an Aspen line and that's a synthetic brush uh, line. And this one is a number two liner. Uh, some people call this a rigger and this allows you to get some very sharp lines. So uh, really an essential, essential detail brush that you need to take with you. And that's once again, the Princeton uh, Aspen line liner number two. Then uh, Princeton also comes out with another line. This is a little bit softer line. It's called Imperial. And so I've got a couple of rounds. This is a six, and then I've also got a number four. And uh, these can help with a few details as well. They're also softer bristle brush. I think it's like a squirrel hair or something of that nature. And especially if you're painting uh, fairly thick and your, uh, your final laying of paint with the details, this will uh, do the trick in terms of laying some other paint on top of uh, paint layers that you've already placed on the canvas. I also, uh, this is called an eraser. They usually come in like packs of three or something at your a local art store. And this is for removing paint. But I like this one. This particular one has a rubber uh, tip on it that looks kind of like a pencil, if you can see that. And so I will scratch my name in as, as a, the method I use to sign my paintings. Uh, you would like to, uh, normally, you want to sign in the uh, right side of the painting because, after all, we read from left to right. And so that way, uh, you've got your signature over here. However, there are times in which you may want to sign over here. If, uh, if your painting is unevenly balanced, if there's too much going on over here, then uh, you may want to put your, your uh, name over here as a way of helping to balance uh, some of the elements that you have in your painting. I do have one uh, palette brush, palette brush, a palette knife in the French easel today. Uh, this is just a cheap one from a, a local art store. I do like the diamond shape. And uh, right now I have not been painting much with palette knives. And so I'm just using this to, to remove paint from the palette or to do some mixing. And uh, it helps to keep down on the weight just to have one of these in here. Then I also have just one thing of uh, medium and I usually have the non-solvent gambling medium or if I'm really in a hurry to have the painting dry I will use an alkyd. Um, gambling has a, a particular fast dry medium that uh, comes in the tube or a liquid form. I like the one that they have that's in the liquid form and then I can just put it into this airtight container uh, this palette, uh, palette tin, and then there you go. And so this is the first drawer, and you see that it's it's relatively full. I also have a little canister for my gamsol, and so I just have a a little clip, and there happens to be a nice little uh, holder right there already on the French easel, and so I just clip it there. And that way it hangs and that makes it uh, less likely for it to spill all over the place with the gamsol. So uh, sometimes I've seen artists will stick it up here, but uh, like I said, I tend to see it spill all over the, the place when it, it goes up on, uh, on the actual uh, French easel. So I would recommend hanging it some, somehow. Uh, you can also get uh, French easel hooks uh, that you can uh, attach to one of the side rails here and then have it hang off the side. You can also get uh, some accessories in which you have brush holders that will also hang on the side if you wish, rather than just keeping them in the uh, French easel itself. Around here, I normally will either tie a plastic bag for the waist uh, here. I've also seen artists that will actually, and sometimes I've done it, uh, there's an opening here in the French easel. You can get a couple of those uh, uh, paper clips, uh, you, you know, the kind of the black uh, the black one's a little bit larger, and you can actually use those clips to clip the bag in between here and hang it down here. Uh, I've seen artists do that, and I've done that. That helps out. Um, some some artists will bring a, 
a roll of paper towels. Lately, what I've discovered in trying to get this, uh, this whole setup to where it will all fit in the French easel so I don't have to carry a bunch of other extra stuff, I'm using baby wipes. Now, there, there's usually some soap involved in baby wipes, and so you're thinking, well, soap and uh, brushes, that's not maybe the greatest combination. But when these are baby wipes, there's not a whole lot of soap in them. And so uh, this, this works out really well. And these packs, now this one's uh, full. It hasn't been opened yet, so it doesn't quite fit my box yet. But as I use it in the studio, and, and this becomes less and less full, uh, it will indeed fit in this in this uh, spot here in the French easel, which is just perfect for me. So it's got enough towels that I can use to clean up, uh, even even myself, if I get paint on myself to clean it up and then still fit in my French easel box. So that way I don't, like I said, I don't really want to have a lot of extra bags to take with me. I have a couple of Raymar uh, panel carriers, for example, and I'm thinking of just using the panel carrier, uh, this contraption here, um, to carry my panels back to the car and usually, if you're careful, you shouldn't damage it, and you can uh, uh, get away from the expense of having to buy a special panel carrier for your, your artwork if you're only going to be doing maybe one uh, painting on a trip. If you're going to do more, then, of course, you're, you'll probably have to get uh, some kind of a panel carrier. Uh, in the back drawers... Of course, these are not lined with tin. The other ones here are obviously lined with tin, and that way it protects the wood from um, your mediums and from the oil and linseed oil and so forth. Uh, so it's it's nice to have one of these. Don't don't remove those uh, from your French easel. You'll want the tin in them if if it has it. Then in the back, so you've got a couple of chip brushes, two inch and one inch. Usually I will use these to tone the canvas, perhaps. And then I've got uh, this interesting little brush to sometimes uh, do some blending in the skies if, if, I, if I need something like that. And then uh, this, this is uh, just a, some medium. This is quick dry medium. This one is actually a leftover. I've been using some water mixable oils and this one's from uh, Royal Talents, their quick dry formula. And uh, I, I really like this little glass container it came in. And uh, one of the nice things about this, it actually fits right into my French easel. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this. And even if, if uh, once, once this is all used up, I'll probably uh, put my other medium whenever I'm using it in this container. So that way I know that it will fit in my French easel. Once again, one less thing I have to worry about if I can carry it all in the French easel, that's what I, I want to do. And then uh, right now, the only thing that doesn't uh, fit in my French easel then would be my apron to keep the paint off of myself and then my my gamsol container so those are the only two things right now from this whole setup that don't fit into the french easel when i go outdoors and why would it be important to set this up in the studio just like this well we are creatures of habit so i would recommend that you set it up in the studio especially if you're going to do a lot of outdoor painting, set it up in your studio just like you would outdoors, and then it will become second nature. And especially if you're practicing so that way when the season opens up and you really want to get outside more and more, then you'll already know how to set everything up, what you can do with the limited palette of paints and brushes, and get used to that whole process of painting and how to... to um, to work on the painting, and especially even like this, uh, practicing how to, to put your panels in if you're going to use this uh, contraption on your French easel as your panel carrier. Uh, you can do that and uh, get used to uh, making sure that it's tight enough and that it's not going to fall out when you're going back to the car and that kind of thing, and, uh, and even your, your palette. Now, I sit my palette across, so this drawer comes out, and I will put the palette down like this, and then it becomes a small work table for me in the studio as well as outdoors. Of course, um, these wood pallets, remember, if you don't want paint to be stuck on there in big glops, you do need to, to clean that paint off once in a while. Um, and of course, you can see that there's been a few times in which some of that paint's dried and it, it just is not going to come off. You can always replace these, though. You can, you can get different kinds of pallets to stick into your French easel. You can also use a French uh, mistress 
or a French companion, which are basically just paint boxes that you can spread over top of this drawer. Once again, though, I'm worried about weight, and I certainly don't want to carry another large box with me. So I'm going to always be using a pallet like this. And then, of course, like I said, it will go over top of this, and it becomes a shelf as you push that all in. All right. Okay, I hope that this little demonstration of, of how to arrange your materials, how to pack a French easel has been helpful for you. If so, please give a thumbs up. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.